My name is David, I'm an examiner on the Boeing 737 and you are watching the sim guide on how to perform at your very best in the simulator time and time again. Well these are really unsettling times for all of us at the moment. If you're a commercial pilot you might find yourself on the ground for an undisclosed amount of time not knowing whether or not you're going to be back flying in two, three months or even whether or not your company is going to survive. So my question is, what can you do in order to maintain your skills and your knowledge during this very unsettling times? My goal is to help share with you some of the videos that I've filmed in the simulator and I've put together some tutorials on how to perform them at the very best. Help you to perform at your peak when required to do so when you're back into the simulator next time. This next video is about rejected takeoff procedure. So we can divide this procedure into a number of key points. The first one is stay calm and make sure that you carry the procedures, the memory items in a nice logical and unrushed manner. Number two, know what you can and you can't stop for or what you will and you won't stop for. So for example up to 80 knots stopping for any abnormality or any malfunction and from 80 knots to V1 a fire engine failure predictive wind or aircraft unsafe to fly. Third point is make sure the call is nice and clear and nice and concise. Be clear of when the auto brakes are going to do the function for you and when you're going to need to apply max manual braking. Five, think about whether or not you need to turn into wind. For example, if you have the wind from the left, fire on the left, turn left, otherwise stop straight ahead. Once you bring the aircraft to a stop, then you can complete the actions that you need as part of that stopping uh, procedure. For example, stowing the reverses and lowering the speed brake and notifying ATC. Notifying ATC is normally done as soon as practical, bringing the aircraft to a stop. Try not to do this during the rejected procedure because this can be an interruption to some of the calls and the procedure. So bring the aircraft to a stop first and then notify ATC. So without further ado, we're going to head into the simulator and we're going to watch this twice. Once all the way through and then I'm going to break it into parts and then we're going to discuss each part individually. Away we go. So just before pressing the toga switches, just think through your memory items and what you'll be stopping for. What malfunctions or failures. So remember the 80 knots serves three purposes. The airspeed cross check, 
incapacitation check and the division between the high speed and the low speed reject items. So in the incapacitation case, just remember as pilot flying, you should be monitoring the airspeed as it's rising, particularly through 80 knots. And if you don't hear a call, you're gonna to need to make the challenge yourself uh, towards the pilot monitoring and repeat. And if nothing, then you're gonna to need to reject the takeoff. The cruise mindset is now on stopping for only fire, engine failure, predictive wind shear or aircraft unsafe to fly. Just be mindful of not launching straight in or making an assumption that this is the part of the check that's going to have the rejected takeoff. So just that little pause to process the information and then run the memory items as appropriate. For example, very often in the check, you might find that the rejected takeoff procedure comes as part of the low visibility takeoff. Don't make that assumption. So just react according to the failure that you are presented with. Speed break up, two reverses. 45%. Some common faults as part of the memory items is to close the thrust levers and forget to disengage the auto throttle. This will come out automatically anyway. And the other one is to go for the reverses before the speed brake. Although the speed brake will come automatically when you select the reverses, that's not the correct procedure and the speed brake should be selected first. Remembering that below 90 knots, you will have to carry out the manual braking yourself. Higher than 90 knots, you'll get the full RTO auto brakes. The first officer will verify the actions are complete by the captain, call out any omissions and call out the speeds, 80 knots, 60 knots, and how much runway is left remaining. So be aware of the lights, um, for example, red and white alternating lights, 900 meters, and red only is 300 meters. Some other lights you might see on some runways are yellow lights towards the end. How many meters is that? And in daylight hours, make sure that you're familiar with the distances from the runway markings. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I hope that you have genuinely got some kind of benefit from these videos. If there's something that you would like to see in particular, please leave your comments below and I can put together a presentation for you to watch that will help you perform at your very best, at your peak performance time and time again from inside the simulator. Thank you for watching.